There have been a lot of transitions in the kingdom of God from uh, one time to another. The kingdom of God is forcefully advancing, and there have been many uh, ticks on the timeline, so to speak, of transitions from uh, major, major changes uh, coming down the pipeline, so to speak, from, from heaven to earth. And there's always been key men associated with those changes. It's never been like a, like a, a massive administrative change from heaven comes down to earth and it just kind of overtakes people and, and nobody knows where it came from or, or what's going on or anything like that. It's always been, The transition has always been administered by a man. Like the transition from the earth being good, which it didn't last long, to sin entering into the world, Adam ushered that transition in. So there's a man, when you think of, when you hear the the name Adam and you think of Adam, what's Adam famous for? (laughs) Sin entered the world through Adam and death through sin. So so death passed upon all men for all that sin. And Adam all die. So this major transition was associated with the man Adam. And of course Noah. I mean even in the, among uh, worldly people, uh, the the flood and Noah go together. People associate the those who are willing to um, consent to it. The flood had to do with the man Noah. It, there, there's a, a inseparable association between the uh, pre-Diluvian world and the post-Diluvian world. And Noah was the only and the eight. Those with him were the only ones to ever see both. Yeah. So this, this uh, cataclysmic transition from a world full of violence and full of people to eight souls, and it was washed. He, clen- he cleansed the world. And Noah was the man that ushered in this transition between the two worlds. And they really were. They really were like two different worlds. He's, it says he destroyed the earth. Right. And so you've got you to take it for, for what it is. If, whether you understand it or you're not, you've got you to be able to say amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, as, and so Noah was the man that ushered in this transition between the old world and the new. Yeah. D- a destroyed world. And, of course, another epic uh, was, was Moses and the Exodus. When the, the, nation, the slave nation came out of, of Egypt... They weren't willing to let them go, but God took them out, led them out with a high hand, and Moses was, without, without any controversy, was, was the man. He's the one that went to Pharaoh. He was the one that all, of the, all the Hebrews knew that if Moses hadn't come, we would still be there. It was, the, the Lord works this way. So in these major transitions, as God always has a man that he works through. And of course, uh, you know the kingdom of, of uh, the times of the of King David were were like this, and the, and the, the his his many um, exploits, and John the Baptist, yeah. with the, the what's been coined the intertestamental time. He ushered in the time of the prophets, which had, uh, from the end of Malachi had been like four hundred some years since uh, since Malachi uh, prophesied till John the Baptist day. So he ushered. The time between the prophets and Jesus, and then he said, "I must decrease." And so that's what—that's the time we associate with John the Baptist. That was his time. So there's all these different times. Well, what greater time or transition has ever have we ever seen than the time that Jesus ushered in? Yeah, yeah. Jesus brought in the time, the transition between the old covenant and the new. So the law and the the services had served their divinely appointed uh, purpose and function of being a shadow, of being a, uh, uh, a prophecy, of being a promise, of all of these different functions of that, that whole time leading up, pointing up to Christ, and th- in this saying, I will not drink of it again until I drink it anew. And we haven't seen a greater transition the transition that Christ brought in was much greater than Adam's, much greater than Noah's, much greater than David's, much greater than Moses, 
And you know, all of these that I had something to do with salvation. Of course, Adam uh, with the, uh, the, the fallen side of salvation, but Adam, nonetheless, all of these uh, epic times of transition all had something directly to do with salvation. And so Jesus has uh, brought in this, uh, the, the, great, the greatest transition. And of course, the, king, the mode of the kingdom is always upward. The, uh, the kingdom of God forcefully advances. So it, it never, there never is a, 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 uh, like a, a, a level, what do they call them? You know, just, just level out and kind of coast mode. Never has been. And people, uh, they may not say that, but they think that the kingdom is like this. That's why they're talking about restoration. Have you ever thought of that? The, 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 the whole concept of restoration is not, it doesn't come from the gospel. It doesn't come from scripture. It doesn't come from the kingdom. But they're looking back saying, I wish we had that. Well, well all the time the kingdom's forcefully advancing. The, and I would dare say it's advancing past them because they're looking back. As if the glory days are all gone. They had, I just, I wish we need and all that kind of stuff looking back when the kingdom is, is advancing. So it's kind of, the, kind of a sign of the times. Now with, uh, this is an exhortation, so here I have one for you. This is the kind of text that I, I know you, you know this, but this is the kind of text that you have to be as the clean animal that chews the cut. There are certain texts uh, that, we uh, not not all texts are equal. You understand this, and not all truth is is equal. Some is is weightier. Jesus talked about weightier matters of the law. So certainly the gospel has weightier matters, and there are there are texts. I've talked to Brother Given. I know uh, several of you have about certain texts that you think about a lot, and you see you could go this way and you go that way, and you, you want to have a firm grasp of it. So you talk to to brethren about it. That's chewing the cud. This is the kind of text you have to chew the cud with. you got to bring it up again. You remember Brother Dean talking about bringing it up. When you pull, pull up to a stoplight through town, you bring up the text. And you think about it again and again and again. And the Holy Spirit works in this kind of activity. You bring it up again. And you bring it up again. Here's a, here's a very practical application of this. While you're reading through the book of Ephesians, think about this. I'll drink it anew. And then read Ephesians. See, your mind can multitask. I, I appreciate what Brother... Given said this morning about work and about activities and expanding yourself and and extending yourself even in your even it, it'll make all things new it'll make your job new when you do it for the Lord when you extend yourself and invest yourself in for for the Lord and your mind you can do more than you think it's been proven to me time and time again I can do more than I think when when, when the Lord's involved in it and so uh, make your just to exercise yourself to multitask in your mind and in your heart and think about, I'll drink it anew, I'll drink it anew. And keep that in, in your forefront of your mind, in, the, in the, the cogitation part of your mind, while you're reading whatever you're reading. Yeah. And that's like chewing the cud. And the Lord, can, the Lord will fellowship with you uh, in that. <clears throat> Peter put it this way, give heed, talking about the more sure word of prophecy, uh, where unto we, we do well to give heed until the day dawn yeah. and the day star rise in your heart. And so that's, that's another, another angle of chewing the cud. It says give, give heed until, until, until you know it's going. When the Lord, when the Lord comes uh, to, to the, on the road to Emmaus, he, it's going to dawn. That's right. yeah. It might not be a road. So, sometimes we do have a Damascus road experience, but not every time. But you, we can at least guarantee you, according to Peter's promise, that you will have a uh, Emmaus Road experience as long as you give heed until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So I exhort you to seek to understand. You know, see, understanding is so satisfying to be able to, to lay hold of the things of God with the, with the eyes of your, of your heart, with your understanding. Your understanding are your... This is, this is what you hang on to the truth with. And remember, uh, after the resurrection, he, uh, when he appeared to the disciples, says, then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So they, and they, they weren't wondering. Just, just, just contrast in your mind how the apostles spoke in the book of Acts as compared to how they spoke in the, in the Gospels. It says, Lord, when will you? And then remember what they said in the, 
in the in the book of Acts is that the the Lord opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So I I exhort you to not be content with ignorance. It seems seems like there's a maybe maybe the uh, religious academic um, arena has made people uh, just content to not understand because they just resign the the deep theological things belong to the theologians and this this kind of stuff and this is. This is just the Holy Spirit comes to give you understanding, and so I, uh, I, I appreciate uh, Brother Given's tenacity in uh, being able to, to to handle a text, and he's he won't he won't shy away from things, and I've been I've been provoked by this many times, and I've even confessed to you a few times. You know I've, I've gone through Ephesians and, and Hebrews, and there's been some texts that. I just can't say, Brother Mike also is very forward in confessing this type of thing. I just can't see as much as I would like to see. I can't state it in 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 uh, in a way that I would like to state it. But that that uh, that is part of what keeps us seeking and keeps us uh, meditating and and uh, re- reaching beyond yourself. That's the that's the mode that faith and hope puts you in. Is that there's is this is so much greater than what we have, and it's so much bigger than who we are, and uh, that that's uh, that's invigorating. It that it's it's lively. We've been brought to a lively hope, born again to a lively hope, and so there's there's nothing stagnating about it. So I I exhort you to seek to understand, and that the Lord's able to give us more than more than what we think. Amen. So I open now for any any that you have, Brother Ricky.